Starting a new adventure in Azeroth is always great fun. We spawn into our starting zone and we get to work on leveling. After taking on some quests, we smash a few creatures, we beat up a few members of the Brotherhood, we dive into some mines and steal some candles, and eventually we make it out into that bigger world of Azeroth. But that's when moving around starts to feel really slow. Moving around the world is like walking through thick syrup. To solve this, I made the basic mount available for free from level 5. We just power walk over to this bloke, accept and complete the quest. Forgot about that, I'm actually level 1, so just give me one second, I can fix that. And much better. Now we have our first mount, all we need are riding lessons. Ah, no money. Just a quick... There we go. And just like that, without any cheating or game master commands at all, we have our first mount. Overall, this just adds a quality of life change that makes the game feel a lot more natural. I mean, why shouldn't you be able to ride a horse at level 5? You come into Azeroth as an adult. I think it makes the game more accessible. Okay, so after some time in Azeroth, you'll eventually want to learn to make your own stuff. That's where professions come in, but try and learn more than two and you're out of luck. So I opened it up so that a character can learn all of the professions. Ultimately, this just makes your character a polygot of sorts, and it's more fun. I love being able to take advantage of all of the professions and making my own stuff. But what about the raw resources themselves? Those mining veins and herbs can sure be a pain in the backside to find. With a few massive database updates, I was able to increase the spawn rates a lot. It, this just simply makes it a lot easier to wander around collecting the raw materials. Another thing I find a bit lacking is the usefulness of professions. A whole bunch of the stuff you make is actually pretty useless, and there's no NPC demand in the world for the things that you can make, which is a shame because something as simple as repeatable quests for things like food, medicine, etc. really make the world come alive. Instead of mass producing 5,000 loaves of bread to level cooking, then binning it all in the Stormwind Canals, why not have a repeatable quest that gives that bread to, I don't know, some orphans, with the chance you'll get a rare companion drop in return? Such a simple way to make professions more relevant and help the player build a stronger bond with the world around them. That's what all these changes are about. But how did I make these changes? Firstly, I use Azeroth Core to emulate the WoW backend server. This is what your client connects to and allows you to play with other the players. Azeroth Core is using a MySQL database to store everything about Azeroth and everything inside of the world of Azeroth. Updating this database is the trick to making changes in the world. For example, to make the mount more accessible to new players, I had to create a new quest that offered the mount as a reward to the player. I then had to attach this quest to an NPC and I had to make the NPC a quest giver. But even that wasn't enough on its own. The horse itself had to be usable by a level 5 player, so that's another database change. And the same again for the riding skill itself. I had to change the riding skill to be available at level 5 too, and I had to lower its price down to 100 copper. The repeatable quest for the orphans, however, that required a bit of a change to Azeroth core and a small bit of custom code. The change I mentioned to the core required me to install mod Aluna, a module that lets us write Lua scripts to change existing game mechanics and also introduce our own. Using a Lua script is what allowed me to make Shalene give the player a random set of items when the quest she offered was completed. But there's almost no limit as to what you can do with those Lua scripts. For example, this crazy chickens quest I added introduces two custom chicken creatures that can heal themselves and cast spells at the player. That simple logic is attached to the creature via a Lua script. That being said, most of the changes do actually happen via the database. And although I could have made these changes directly to the database, I instead used a custom Python tool I'm calling Daisy. Daisy allows me to define or write YAML, which is a markup language, which she then converts into SQL for me. A lot of SQL. Although I wrote only 88 lines of YAML to make the starting mount accessible via two NPCs, one for Alliance players and another for Horde players, my 88 lines of YAML got me 837 lines of SQL. That's quite a solid saving in time and effort and errors as SQL can be quite fiddly to get right. By the way, if you want to learn more about the concepts that I'm discussing in this video, then head over to our sponsor, Upload Academy. They've got micro courses, they've got tutoring, and they've got mentoring. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Using Daisy also allows me to easily share what I'm doing with others. This permits them to adopt and change my work to suit their own needs on their own servers. Another code base I've used is my Ansible roles. These roles have been carefully crafted to get Azeroth Core set up more easily and with a very high degree of success. 
It took some time, but I was eventually able to refine the workflows and get everything going in the right order. Do note that this Ansible code base isn't designed for beginners. You will need command line and Ansible knowledge to make it work. That being said, I have done my best to document the processes and how you use it in order to make it as easy as possible for you. So what's next? Well, I'm going to continue making professions relevant by adding in more demand from NPCs. I'm going to start working on a long set of quest chains that have the player travel around the world more, a break from the usual kill 10 of these things or get me five apples or from over there because I'm hungry and lazy. And I'm going to be working on making the world come alive a bit more by having the existing NPCs in the world move around and actually seem more active. And I'm also going to have NPCs go home at night, creating a more realistic world. Yeah, like literally, I want the NPCs to literally go home at night. It's dark, go to bed. Anyway, I'll drop links in the description below to both Daisy and the Ansible code bases so you can check them out. Like always, if you've got ideas for changing the world of Azeroth, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to join the Discord, I'd love to hear your ideas and experience with modding the world of Warcraft. See you next time.